I'm here at Healdsburg and delighted to be back after many years with my um, a mid-size steel string that's made out of African blackwood, a bit of sapwood showing, just a hint, I love it, and a western red cedar top. And of course it has my uh, armrest and also a bevel on the back edge that I call the rib rest, where it's against the rib cage right here. Side port sound hole, of course. And uh, the inlay, uh, this guitar was originally made for nobody. It is sold, but it was made for nobody so I could do what I wanted. And this inlay is called Courage in Sarajevo. It's, uh, it's a combination of the power of music and anti-violence. We have the cellist of Sarajevo, the famous cellist who played during the siege of Sarajevo. Uh, so at the siege of Sarajevo, this cellist braved sniper fire played in bombed out buildings on dangerous streets and nobody shot him. He was trying to make a point about stopping the violence. So here he is in a burned out building and then I carry on the scene of two young women and so often around the world the women are behind the, the spark of the peace movements uh, trying to prevent the bloodshed. Here is a sniper's rifle and they are putting their hands up right in front of, of the rifle to stop the bloodshed. One young woman is looking at the sniper. This woman, I don't know if you can see behind the strings, she's looking out at you, sort of to bring you into the story and to confront your own feelings about it. So I always like a narrative to my, to my inlays. Uh, I see the way I do it, it's not decorating the guitar. This is just my canvas, my world, the guitars, and uh, I'm communicating something. That's just what, makes me happy. Yeah, the materials, uh, they're all stone and shell and uh, so for example the dark blue here is lapis, the green is a stone called gaspate, um, even his cello with the grain showing is a stone uh, called orange spiny and uh, the red is red coral and then of course mother of pearl and abalone is there and Tahitian black pearl is the uh, his suit um, and then engraved, of course. The details are cut in with a simple hand tool, a hand graver like metal engraving. And then filled with Laskin's special blend engraving filler, which you can get from Stumac and LMI. It's 101 hours in this inlay. I know that only because it's the one subjective part of the instrument, and it's when I, I keep a timesheet, because no, I never repeat the art ever. So it's always starting with a blank page, design, execution, well, you know, I had held this spot so that I could come to the show with something that potentially could be bought. I always feel, I don't know if I'm right, that psychologically someone at your table, if they think they could possibly own it, they might be a little more interested in trying it out. And then I'm chatting with a, an, an existing customer. Oh, you're going to the show? Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to being back after many years. And hey, what do you bring in? Yeah, this African blackwood cedar thing. What are you going to do for the inlay? And I told him, and literally he said, can I have it? So it actually sold two weeks before I came down. So obviously the beveling has spread. It's become very popular. It's so many of the makers here seem to be doing it. Yeah, so yeah. And even... You're happy about that spread. That I, I, I spread. absolutely am. Sorry if I interrupt you, but uh, I absolutely am. I didn't... I, per I have a patent on something else. I know what it takes and how expensive and painful it is. I didn't want to patent this. I wanted it to spread and I thought, on top of that, somebody could probably easily get around the concept patent by tweaking it a little bit, and then I'd be defending it in court with money I don't have anyway. So why not just be nice about it, you know? So I just want, like many other innovations that have been happening in these you know, last decades, not just for me, you just want attribution to be accurate, that's all. Instead, and most of people of our generation, my generation anyway, they all know about it because they remember the first time I came to a guitar show or a symposium and they called, Grit, what are you doing? You're whacking a bit off the side of your guitar. Is there something wrong, you know? Um, in any case, it, it is for comfort. It's for ease of right shoulder strain. This isn't just a, a silly thing. Uh, I've had so much support from arts medicine clinics for this. Um, and, and now there's a few different styles. Kevin Ryan came up with his way of doing it, you know, um, but I'm glad everybody still credits me, even Bob Taylor. Even Taylor Guitars has their R. Taylor special models and they offer a bevel and even in his ads he's kind enough to say inspired by the Alaskan bevel. 
Um, Are there other places where it's good to have a bevel, bevel or a bad place to have a bevel? Well, uh, obviously this one I feel is important. If you sit when you play where it's against the rib cage, you can sort of see it right there. I've seen some people doing it at the bottom edge thinking, well, you don't want this edge. But without that, the guitar is going to slide if you sit when you play. And if you stand, it's irrelevant. So to my mind, there isn't other places. This is where the body interacts. That's the point, to do it, not where it's just an interesting decorative touch. I've seen people do things with cutaways where they don't scoop up the body, they just kind of bevel in there. And that's an interesting use of it, but that's not for comfort, that's for playability, right? Um, and then of course we have the side port. And um, I consider myself the co-originator of it. Uh, the first one to, to do it at all was the uh, Sergei de Young, the maker uh, also from Canada, who had done it for a classical player and he made him a little plate of rosewood that would stick over there with a couple of screws he was so that he could hear his quieter numbers better but there he was in the middle of a performance with a little screwdriver and you can imagine where those screws go in the middle of a gig right on on the stage in the dark so he was getting a guitar from me and he showed me this and he said you know I told him well why don't I make you something I can open and close with a sliding panel and I did and uh, he picked it up and sure enough he opened it, played it, and as a monitor, you do hear yourself stronger through this. That was the reason. But I'm sitting seven feet away on a couch, and uh, I heard the guitar fuller out front. Completely surprised, we were, both of us said, what the hell was that? And I played it, and he played it, and with the sliding door, we could open and close it and see the difference. And I made a flamenco that way, and it happened. Then I got to steel strings, was consistent every time. And what we've come to understand, as we're partially sort of, uh, you know, reverse engineering it, trying to figure out why it works, it, that it's enhancing the lower wavelengths, the lower frequencies, but right across the register. So the whole guitar sounds fuller because it's picking up some low frequencies. And it's really quite something. And so now, uh, for years, it's standard. I won't make a guitar without it because it just makes a better guitar. Why wouldn't I do it, you know? But somewhere in uh, the U.S. scene gave it the official name of side port or sound port. And I guess it makes everybody relax that it's legitimate. It's not just a hole in my guitar. I mean, early days when I was doing it, I would joke with people. No, no, no. This is Grit Laskin's patented drool collecting location. And I would sell special Grit Laskin towelettes. And that's where I made all my money. You know, it's kind of like ink for a printer, right? You get them in the aftermarket anyway, but it's not... Anyway, so there's my guitar.